Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Monday the 1st of September 2025. It's officially done, we're out of winter now and that means we're talking about severe weather, thunderstorms and rainfall across the northern half of the nation. Yes, really we are. We've got some weather coming in for Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia and also New South Wales that may be of interest to people that are following the severe thunderstorm topic. Uh, currently around Australia there's not an awful lot going on so we're going to skip to the good part. If you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video right now. We're the only interesting aspect of the current situation happening right now over in Queensland, where a little bit of rainfall is moving through into the Sunshine Coast and down the Capricorna coastline and into the interior parts of southeastern Queensland, with a few light showers expected to move through throughout the course of today. Apart from that, that southerly flow continuing to remain strong for Victoria, Tasmania, parts of South Australia as well, and a few showers moving through into the southeastern corner of the nation. But apart from that, there really isn't much to be talking about. Spring weather is actually kicking in across southwestern Australia and much of interior Australia over the next couple of days. So starting with our top story, and that's just Queensland in general. Today, a few showers moving through this morning into the Capricorn coastline and into interior parts of southeastern Queensland, in particular around Tarum, Chinchilla, Roma and St. George. A few showers are expected throughout the course of today and a few light showers are also expected around the Sunshine Coast and into the southeast coast of Queensland as well. Rainfall is purely going to be coastal based into the southeast corners of Queensland, including for the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast. We're not expecting large accumulations at all and falls up to five millimetres are possible through the Gold Coast coastline and parts of the Sunshine Coast. Slightly heavier rainfall into this pocket of Queensland here, inland from Rockhampton, Gladstone, Agderswater and Bundaberg, in particularly around Injun, Tarum, Biloela and Eddisvold. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations around the 5 to 15 millimetre mark, potentially a few drops up to 25 millimetres as we get towards this afternoon. Just some slow moving, steady rain bands moving through and you can see that here on the radar and the satellite imagery. Just some steady but not too heavy rainfall moving through into this pocket of Queensland. Nothing too crazy uh, for this time of year, sort of unpleasant weather, especially as we do head off in towards September. But again, I need to stress this, there's absolutely no serious impacts expected from this rainfall. As you can tell, it is a bit of a slow news day today here on the weather front. This rainfall will clear off later this afternoon and into this evening. A few showers expected to linger here and there into tomorrow morning around the Capricorn coastline and even inland into parts of southeast Queensland. Some showers are possible into the Brisbane area later tomorrow afternoon and evening and a few showers are also expected across the New South Wales northeast coastline today and tomorrow as well. But you can see dry weather very quick to pipe up once again across much of Queensland before we get some rainfall beginning to develop into the Coral Sea and this is another large aspect of the forecast update here into the far north e uh, reaches of Queensland and even into the north coastline of Queensland we could be talking about some rainfall into the second week of September that might be considerably heavy especially for this time of the year. Uh, we are talking about some rainfall and thunderstorms developing through interior parts of Queensland through Thursday and Friday. In fact we may see a weak thunderstorm outbreak around Windora and Longridge through Friday afternoon. Uh, a good way to end the week could be a bit of a cracker thunderstorm night especially for this time of the year into early September. We're not used to seeing thunderstorms into this pocket of Queensland, but in the next couple of weeks, we definitely expect conditions to become more favourable for thunderstorms. This will be caused by a low pressure trough that's going to extend through this part of Queensland and some isolated thunderstorms are most certainly possible through Friday. Mostly non-severe thunderstorms. It doesn't look like the environment's going to be favourable enough to favour or produce severe thunderstorms at this point in time, but there will definitely be some convective available potential energy in the atmosphere and you can see values pushing close to a thousand joules per kilogram for these thunderstorms. So that's pretty healthy for this time of the year. And again, considering temperatures that are going to warm up in this part of Queensland, early 30s expected on Friday, uh, and the humidity values also being there, we're not writing off uh, a couple of good thunderstorms developing on Friday. These will contract closer to the coastline later Friday night and into early Saturday morning, and a few showers and thunderstorms expected to continue through Saturday before this southeasterly trade flow pipes up for northern Queensland. You can see winds expected to pipe up from the southeast and get quite gusty through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can see rainfall really beginning to build through the 6th and the 7th. Saturday and Sunday for northern Queensland. Rainfall is expected to develop properly on the evening of the 6th at this point in time and it will be at its heaviest through the 7th and the 8th. Again, I use that quite loosely because we're not talking about heavy falls at all, but some steady shower activity is expected to move into the Cassiope Coast and even the Daintree Rainforest as well. And about three or four days of relatively wet weather, even for this time of the year, is likely to set in for northern Queensland. A couple of days will follow of dry weather and then we're expecting rainfall to pop up again around mid-September and that's following a bit of a wetter trend for Queensland as we get into towards mid to late September with more rainfall expected after about the 15th of September as you would expect for this time of the year. 
Having a look at rainfall accumulations, as mentioned, there is nothing serious at all to be mentioning at this point in time. 14-day uh, rainfall accumulation is actually really minimal up into parts of northern Queensland, and you can see it's really only that three-day period or four-day period from the 7th to the 10th of September where the rainfall does actually start to get a little bit heavier, or more than zero, I should translate that to. Again, we're not expecting heavy falls at all, but we could be seeing rainfall accumulations widespread between the 10 to 40 millimetre mark, some more isolated falls around the Castro Coast between 20 to 60 millimetres, and I know this forecast model is suggesting 30 millimetres here, but northern Queensland can be two or three times wetter than the forecast models in certain places. So 100 millimetres is possible. Again, for northern Queensland, that's a drop in the ocean. It's not enough to flood a drain pipe. With rainfall also expected to move into the Daintree rainforest, it's just a little bit of rainfall to come through before the wet season does properly start up. And some of these showers may be a little bit heavier as well. We could be talking about rainfall rates between 10 to 25 millimetres an hour for brief periods of time. Rainfall will then properly pipe up into the uh, second week of September. And you can see rainfall the Accumulations do begin to uh, increase, especially in the eastern bear forecast, into the second week of September, with falls around the Casper Coast likely to exceed 100 millimetres uh, between the 7th and the 15th of September. Uh, by definition, the first 50 millimetres of rainfall after September 1st, so after now, uh, does kick in for the uh, official start or the official designated start of the northern rainfall onsets. So what that means is if any one location north of the Queensland New South Wales border now picks up 50 millimetres, their northern wet season has officially begun. That's how the Bureau of Meteorology uh, classifies it. It's probably the best classification uh, for a rainfall onset that Australia has, considering how uh, unpredictable and variable the wet seasons can be. So we're now looking at far north Queensland to potentially be the first place to officially start their wet season into the second week of September. Very likely to happen through parts of the Cassidy Coast. 50 millimetres is not hard to achieve up there. Even at this time of the year, typically their driest months, 50 millimetres is not much rainfall for them. And we could be talking about that happening as soon as next week. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there and what the first location will be to officially break through that northern rainfall onset barrier. In fact, even today, you can see a few showers and a few uh, cloud activity moving through into the Casper Coast. Nothing crazy at all, but already wind observations are beginning to build. And again, temperatures really beginning to build across northern Queensland. It is a sign of things to come. When those temperatures begin to build and those winds shift to the southeast and get quite gusty through the Coral Sea, that's when we're talking about the rainfall not being far away. And that's exactly what's happening already up and towards northern Queensland. As mentioned in yesterday's wet season forecast. We are expecting an earlier than usual northern rainfall onset through much of Queensland. In fact, a lot of pockets of Queensland could be looking at far earlier than usual wet season uh, onsets. So that really does align with the forecast. We're now starting to see rainfall pipe up as early as early to mid-September. Interesting stuff, that's for sure. But again, no flooding concerns, nothing in the way of severe weather concerns either for Queensland. Just a small pocket between Longreach and Windora this coming Friday. They could be talking about severe thunderstorms, and that's basically the only thing of concern for Queensland. Like I said at the start of the video, it is a slow news day here at Cyclones Oz. Uh, looking a little bit more forward, you can actually see rainfall accumulations beginning to pipe up in the 14-day uh, period, uh, or actually in the 7-10-day to 10 day forecast period across interior parts of the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland and New South Wales as well. And that's especially apparent when you switch things over to the GFS forecast model here. Through parts of very dry and arid South Australia, New South Wales and southwestern Queensland, there's actually some reasonable rainfall accumulations on the forecast. We've been talking about this for the last couple of days. A few days ago, we were talking about this rainfall being in the Northern Territory and Western Australia, and that shifted as we expected a little bit further towards the east. So what we're going to be looking at uh, after about Friday or so is a strong weather system in the Great Australian Bight, dragging in a bit of moisture and a bit of low pressure activity uh, through the Northern Territory and then into South Australia. And you can see that rainfall really beginning to pipe up between the 7th and the 8th of uh, September, the Sunday and Monday uh, to follow. And you can see a few showers and thunderstorms expected into this little pocket of Queensland. So again, after those thunderstorms into the western half of Queensland around Longreach and Windora on Friday, we may be talking about some more thunderstorms a few days later on the 8th and the 9th, Monday and Tuesday. We're not expecting anything crazy in the way of rainfall. I think how this is going to more pan out is we're going to see some low level cloud moving through and that's going to carry a little bit of moisture. And um, what we would be expecting from that is just some steady but moderate rainfall accumulations. It'll persist for about a 36 hour period through parts of the Northern Territory. But especially at this point in time, it looks like this rainfall is going to dominate the scene over in Southwestern Queensland and into the north uh, Northwestern corner of New South Wales, also into the Northeastern corner of South Australia, just in this pocket here of extremely remote Queensland, South 
South Australia and New South Wales. I'd say the Northern Territory is more talking about showers and more isolated rain bands moving through. Uh, looks like major population centres such as Alice Springs are going to dodge the rainfall here, uh, but you can see we're really expecting quite a convectively and fa uh, favourable environment to develop through this weekend and into Monday, which means a few thunderstorms are going to be most certainly possible ahead of the more steady rainfall that will be dragged in from this weather event here. You can actually see the GFS really calling for some solid rainfall to develop, especially towards New South Wales, and we may be seeing some proper thunderstorm outbreaks developing through uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 9th and the 10th of September, and then especially out towards Thursday, the 11th and Friday, the 12th of September. So this will definitely be a bit, a bit of a time to watch through this part of Australia. But if you were uh, paying really close attention, have a look at the temperature forecast through this part of Australia. Have a look. It really starts to get warm, especially through this weekend. You can see Sunday is actually going to be a really warm day with some temperatures being dragged down from the Northern Territory. 36, even pushing close to 37 in places around Lake Eyre and into the northeast of South Australia. That's usual for this time of year, but that's still very, very warm and it's a stark change to what we're seeing temperature-wise right now and what we were seeing temperature-wise just a few weeks ago. Temp temperatures will remain warm on Monday the 8th and this is pretty much rock solid on the forecast modelling as well. This is going to happen uh, these temperatures are really going to begin to rise into September and that's going to continue to really build that convectively favourable environment which means when we do start to see these rain bands developing thunderstorms are going to be uh, become a real problem with these rain bands because uh, we're going to be talking about a very convectively unstable and a very convectively favourable environment with a lot of energy and a lot of moisture and a lot of heat built up in there so definitely going to have to keep an eye on this forecast here especially through the Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia and in particularly through New South Wales thunderstorms do look to be becoming a little bit more of a concern on the forecast as you would expect for this time of the year. It's September now but in 30 days it's going to be October and October, November, December, they are peak storm months for the eastern half of Australia. Now just to shape things up a little bit, we're going to be talking about the winter's weather seen across southwestern and southeastern Australia. It's another important aspect of the forecast. Currently today, we do have that set, uh, westerly flow continuing through Tasmania and into the southern half of Victoria. A few showers still persisting here and there, and a weak cold front has pushed through Tasmania in the last couple of hours uh, with some strong winds, especially at Map Psyker Island, 89 kilometres an hour. That's nothing unusual for them, but it does give you a bit of a picture of how strong the winds can be with some of these roaring 40 cold fronts that are coming through. And you can see more rainfall is expected to push through the west coast of Tasmania especially, but also through parts of Victoria and South Australia throughout the remainder of today. Drying off a little bit tonight, then showers returning tomorrow from the northwest for Tasmania as a weak cold front pushes through tomorrow afternoon into Victoria and the west coast of Tasmania. Dropping that snow level again uh, through Tasmania down to about 400 metres, this cold front will pack a little bit of a punch for the west coast of Tasmania and snowfall and showers expected to continue right through Wednesday and Thursday, clearing finally on Friday as a strong high pressure system begins to build across this part of Australia, which means temperatures are going to plummet on Friday, Saturday, and then into Sunday as this high pressure system then gets pushed out into the Tasman Sea and more cold front activity. In fact, some strong cold front activity with a shift in the southern annular mode expected around the 8th or the 9th of September across southeastern Australia. And we could be talking about some proper strong cold front activity that's really going to uh, enhance some of those thunderstorm uh, forecasts and really a driving factor behind the rainfall that we're calling for in this part of Australia here into the uh, areas north of southeastern Australia through New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia. Into the southwest of Western Australia, cold front activity is expected throughout the week. In fact, Wednesday, the weather, the beautiful weather that we're seeing right now is going to make a bit of a shift. We've got a low pressure system moving through, which will develop a west coast trough actually from today, but especially through Tuesday and Wednesday, keeping things cool, calm and collected in the mornings. And then we're really expecting temperatures to rise, especially for this time of the year through parts of the west coast. And you can see, in fact, Perth expecting multiple runs of 20 degree days through Tuesday and Wednesday. Not unusual for this time of the year, but it is definitely a little bit more uh, finer weather than what we're expecting uh, around this time of the year before the weather rolls in again on Thursday and Friday. A strong cold front expected to move through on Friday will be returned to winter's weather with more rainfall expected. In fact, this one could pack 30 millimetres to the southwest. Very good rainfall for this time of the year. Showers expected to be very frequent behind it through Friday night and another weekend washout expected through Sunday and Sunday. This low pressure system is going to ride far north and that's going to keep those temperatures cool, keep the rainfall flowing until at least Sunday afternoon and evening before it returns to dry and sunny next week under the influence of high pressure systems. Rainfall will then return around Friday the uh, 12th of September by the looks of things with another weaker but still quite a strong cold front moving through and uh, yeah de definitely a perfect example of bosses weather with rainfall this weekend and next weekend with fine weeks embedded in between. 
across southwest and western Australia, we are expecting the rainfall to return to a little bit below average, uh, not, not below average, but below in comparison to what we have been seeing in the last couple of months. You can see 14 day rainfall accumulation still well above 50 millimetres across a wide swath of the southwest and pushing close to 130 millimetres in places. So the wet weather is definitely expected to continue. And especially with Friday, Saturday and Sunday, that li uh, low pressure system running quite far north, we're expecting that rainfall to properly continue across southwest and WA and that rainfall will continue, mark my words, with up to 100 millimetres possible in a few places through the hills and into the southwest this weekend. Rainfall will also make it out in a pretty significant capacity into parts of the wheat belt. So rainfall isn't going anywhere across southwest and WA, uh, and not anytime soon, but September is expected to be a little bit closer to average or even below average through parts of the wheat belt, which is definitely good to see because it has been very, very wet indeed. Unfortunately, the only concern right now is frost. So we've had a few cold mornings already and those ground temperatures are really starting to get close to freezing, if not below freezing overnight. And now that we're at the crescendo of the cropping season through the wheat belt when we're looking at zero degree mornings like we are right now but especially minus one minus two and minus three which we haven't seen just yet through the wheat belt but i fear could come next week in the wake of this strong cold front that's when we're really starting to talk about concerning weather for these agricultural uh hubs into the wheat belt so really hoping that the warmer weather kicks in sooner rather than later and the rainfall does pull away because now we're talking about uh, rainfall and uh, uh, cold weather continuing for longer than it has to across the weed belt. So some more rainfall would be welcome, but cold weather definitely unwelcome at this point in time across the weed belt. But that's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. A bit of a slow news day here, but still plenty to be talking about, and that's going to be the case throughout the course of the week. Nothing major going on around Australia, at least for the next five or six days, but we could be talking about some interesting smaller snippets, especially through Queensland and eastern Australia, and also through southwestern Australia as well. That's going to do it for me. I do hope you found this video update enjoyable and informative, and preferably both. And if you have, then please consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it as well. The support lately has been much appreciated. Check out the Northern Rainfall Onset Forecast Update uh, link in the uh, description and also link on the homepage of the channel. So make sure you do check that out right now. Link on screen as well. That's going to do it for me. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. Could not run the show without them. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.